Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, this one nicknamed Leyline Lotus. It's a Monorat Devotion deck featuring a Leyline Tyrant from Zeneca Rising alongside a Nyx Lotus from Theros Beyond Death. Leyline Tyrant a 4 mana for 4 Mythic Rare Dragon with Flying, saying you don't lose unspent red mana as steps and phases end, and when the Leyline Tyrant dies you may spend any amount of red mana, and when you do it deals that much damage to any target. And then a great way to generate a lot of red mana is with the Nyx Lotus, a 4 mana legendary artifact, enters battlefield tapped, and then we can tap it, in our case choose red, and add an amount of red mana equal to our devotion to red, and our devotion to red is the total sum of red mana symbols on the non-land permanents we control, and there's no shortage of those red mana symbols on our permanents. Just taking a quick look at our deck, we've got cards like Wily Goblin adding 2 devotion, Goblin Chain Warler adding 3 devotion, cards like Torbran also adding 3 devotion, so the Nyx Lotus can very quickly generate a ton of mana, which then we can hoard with our Leyline Tyrant, and then when a Tyrant ever dies, we get to deal a whole bunch of damage to the opponent, often ending the game on the spot. And to help us kill our own Leyline Tyrant, we also have a few ways to do that. We've got two copies of Kazul's Fury as part of the mana base, a 3 mana instant, that as an additional cost we can sacrifice a creature, and then it deals damage equal to the sacrificed creature's power to any target, so that's one way of popping the piñata as it were. And then we also have Shatter Skull Smash, a great land in our mana base, but we can also cast it as a sorcery, dealing X damage divided as we choose among up to two target creatures and or planeswalkers, and if X is six or more, Shatter Skull Smashing deals twice X damage divided as we choose among them instead, so we can even target our own Leyline Tyrant with the Shatter Skull Smashing, or we can just cast a huge smashing thanks to all the mana that we're saving up with our Leyline Tyrant. So those are just some of the key synergies in the deck. Let's take a look at the rest of it. At one mana we've got two copies of Soulscar Mage, a one mana one two wizard with prowess, so it gets plus one plus one whenever we cast a non-creature spell. And if a source we control would deal non-combat damage to a creature an opponent controls, put that many minus one minus one counters on that creature instead. So while we don't have a ton of cheap instants and sorceries to enable prowess and get a ton of damage in with our Soulscar Mage, and we also don't particularly care about it being a wizard for any potential wizard synergies, just the ability to turn our damage into minus one minus one counters is incredibly useful, especially alongside Goblin Chairlord that deals one damage to each opposing creature when it enters a battlefield. Then at 2 mana we've got some removal in the form of Omen of the Forge, dealing 2 damage to any target when it enters the battlefield, can even play it at instant speed thanks to Flash, and for 2 and we can also sacrifice it to Scry 2. So Omen is just a cheap removal spell that adds 1 devotion that will stay in play, and at some point we can also sacrifice it to maybe improve our future draw steps, also very nice in combination with a Lotus and Tyrant combo. And then we also have the full playset of Wily Goblin, creates a treasure when it enters the battlefield, so it can help us ramp into a turn 3, Lotus or Leyline Tyrant, and also just adds 2 Devotion, which is useful later. And then we also have the full place at Bonecrusher Giant, just an excellent creature in any red deck, can first use the Adventure dealing 2 damage, and then afterwards play the Giant as a 4-3, shines especially against opposing aggro decks. Then at 3 mana we've got 2 copies of Valakut Awakening, which we can also play as a tapped land Valakut Stoneforge. This just helps us smooth out our draw if we draw too many lands, or if we draw too many of the same legendary card we can get rid of it and hopefully replace it with something better. We also have two copies of Annex Hardened in the Forge, and we're not even playing Embercleave in this deck, just as a nice card that uh, rewards us for having a lot of Devotion. Also pairs quite nicely with the Kazul's Fury, because if we have a lot of red Devotion, Annex is going to have a ton of power that we can then translate into a lot of damage, and also leaves behind some 1-1 one -one tokens that pair nicely with our Torbran, as they will deal two additional damage potentially. And then we've got our full playset of a Goblin Chain Whirler. Great card in this deck, has a nice defensive creature that can deal with any one toughness creatures from the opponent. Especially nice with a Soulscar Mage or a Torbran in play, as we get to translate the damage into minus one, minus one counters, or potentially deal three damage to each opposing creature when the Chain Whirler enters the battlefield. And then at 4 mana, of course, we've got our Leyline Tyrant, 3 copies of Torbran, which is also amazing in this deck, adding 3 Red Devotion, and adding 2 damage to each source we control, essentially. And then we also have the 3 copies of Nyx Lotus. Don't want a full playset, because drawing multiples is a little awkward. And then we also have 2 copies of Glorybringer to top off our curve, as a 5 mana 4-4 Dragon with Flying and Haste, and we can exert the Glorybringer as it attacks, meaning it's not going to untap in our next untap step. And if we do, it deals 4 damage to target non-Dragon creature an opponent controls. 
And then the mana base, we already mentioned the four copies of Shatter Skull Smashing, which is also an important part of our late game if we happen to make a lot of mana with Nyx Lotus. We've got our two copies of Kazul's Fury, then 16 basic mountains, two Forgotten Cave, which we can cycle for one mana, and we don't have that many turn one plays, so just playing it tapped on turn one is fine. And then two copies of Castle Embreath. Don't want too many copies because we do have a lot of lands that aren't necessarily mountains, so we don't want an opening hand with too many castles coming into play tapped, but it is a nice way to pump up our creatures, especially alongside the first striking Chain Warler, or maybe the tokens that Annex leaves behind. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. And I think I'm gonna play the Kazul's Fury and hold on to the Smashing, because we do have Lotus to potentially make quite a bit of mana that we can then sink into the Smashing. We also have Annex, which could pair well with the Kazul's Fury. But overall, I think I prefer hanging on to the Shadow Skull Smashing. Now let's see what we're up against. Turn one Mountain into Lava Runner, so a red aggressive deck. Don't have the best tools for the matchup. Cards we want to draw against Monorad include Bonecrusher Giant, Goblin Shamwaller, and some of our dragons. Let's see if Annex can hold the fort. And then I might as well attack with the Wily Goblin since I'm not blocking with it. Wizard's Lightning leaves behind two tokens. That can block. And if Yashino Paramancer deals too. Opponent finds a pretty good one here in Valakut Awakening. So I could smash him for three right now, taking out a robber and the Paramancer. It's probably worth it. And then hit for three. We do have Castle Ambreath to pump the tokens, so that's nice. Although our hand's not looking great. Lightning Strike face to pump the Lava Runner. Down to five we go. Alright, Omen's reasonable here. So the tokens can attack. And then I can use Omen to kill Lava Runner. Maybe Wily Goblin to block Paramancer. And I'm probably just crying with Omen here to find more action. Although Devotion count is getting lower and lower, so the Nyx Lotus is not looking great. Alright, Torbrand's probably fine here. Opponent probably has at least one burn spell in hand. So let's see if they can top deck a second one to kill us. Alright, stomp. And a shock, so we're at one. Plays the Bone Crusher. And a Lava Runner. So we're not dead yet. Ooh, Glory Bringer, quite a draw. So this only triggers off spells and not abilities. So what happens if I Glorybringer smash? I think my opponent's just dead. Exert, attack with everyone. And take out the Bonecrusher Giant. Opponent can jump Torbran and they're still dead. GG's, close one here against Monored. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Definitely need to play Kazul's Fury as a land. And then turn two we can stomp, turn three we've got a lot of options. Facing turn one Swamp into Crib Breaker, so some sort of zombie stack. They could have a turn two Lazatap Reaver which lets them draw a card right away. 
I'm tempted to wait on stomping until we play the Chain Whirler to kill the Crit Breaker instead. And then I'll just play this tapped for now so we can play our 4 drop on curve. Opponent just plays a tap land into the Stitcher Supplier. So Goblin Chain Whirler is going to be quite good here. Although my opponent is playing a Godfarer's Gift deck. So we will be putting more stuff in their graveyard with the Stitcher Supplier. And there's the Lazatep Reaver I was talking about, alongside Priest of Forgotten Gods. So here, I think I just like uh, Torbran, and then next turn the Chain Warlord can potentially deal 3 to everything. They might just chum block anyway here to prevent 5 damage. Alright, they do have the gate to the afterlife. And they're very close to getting a god for his gift. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five creatures in the graveyard. This will make it six. So yeah, next turn they will have a god for his gift essentially. Which is not great news for me. But I can maybe get enough damage in here. Let's see, Chain Whirler deals three to my opponent, and that's five plus four is nine. So we might just be able to burn them out. So, yeah. If I play the Smashing untapped, I can stomp for an additional 4 damage. So, let's see here. Yeah, I guess it just does it here. Bam! Taking out Mono Black Godfarer's Gift with the help from Torbrain. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got another one of those hands that looks like a one lander, but actually we've got four lands potentially. Yeah, this is fine. And then I have to decide if I want to play the Soul Scar Mage turn one, or if I want to just play a tapped land instead. I think I'll play a tap land and then turn two I can go a Soul Scar Mage plus another tap land potentially. And if they play an Elves. Well, now it's tempting to wait for Chain Whirler, especially once we play the Soul Scar Mage. So yeah, let's stick to the plan and hope they play more one toughness creatures or creatures in general that we can shrink down. Eric's Harbinger. Alright, it's not too bad. So, get to shrink it down, can block it with the Chain Whirler, and can maybe finish it off with Omen. That can play Wily Goblin. Keep up Omen of the Forge. And next turn, maybe Glorybringer. And Omen can also enable Prowess at instant speed. Scavenging Ooze could be annoying, so that's probably the first creature I want to kill. Suppose we could have responded to the ooze activation with Omen. But I can just kill it with a glory bringer next turn, so I'm not really in a hurry. Double Omen. Yeah, let's just glory bringer using a treasure. Take out the ooze. And against the Mono Green deck, Glorybringer's going to do a lot of damage. And in the meantime, Chain Warlord's doing an excellent job on defense. Hang on to the Smashing. And I guess 
because the minus one minus one counters apply from soul scar mage we didn't even grow the pelt collector because when the ooze died it actually didn't have any power so that's actually another cool interaction probably want to kill fiend artisan before it searches up anything scary And we'll pass. Every turn that goes by is another chance to kill a creature with Glorybringer, so we don't have to be in a hurry. Another ooze. There's two creatures in the graveyard. So even if I respond to the first activation with Omen, they'll still get to exile the second one in response to make ooze big enough to survive. But again, we can just kill it with the Glorybringer, so it's no big deal. And then we can also play Torbrain to increase our damage outputs. Yeah, it's not looking good for our opponent. Opponent attacks with their creatures in the hopes of putting an extra plus one plus one counter on the ooze so it doesn't die to the Glorybringer Exert. But I think I'm still fine blocking the Harbinger. And then even if we only put four minus one minus one counters on the ooze, that's probably good enough to take it out of commission for a while. And then I can maybe take out Pelt Collector with the Omen before it picks up a plus one counter from the Harbinger dying. So Ooze is going to grow up to a 5-5. Five five. Now a quirky interaction with Torbran and Soulscar Mage is that if you're applying minus one minus one counters instead of dealing damage, you're not going to get to put two additional minus one minus one counters on the creature with Torbran. So we have to keep that in mind as well. So even if we play Torbran, Glorybringer still only puts four minus one minus one counters on a creature that it uh, tries to exert onto. So we get to play Torbran, attack with everyone, shrink the ooze down by four, and they won't have any good blocks. And that should pretty much seal the deal. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got both Lotus and Tarrant, so hopefully we get to see both in action. Turn to Wily Goblin to set up a turn 3 Lotus, if we draw land. Ooh, drawing the second Lotus is yeah, probably one of our worst draws here. Alright, let's hope we can find a basic mountain. A Lotus Cobra, we can always kill with... Goblin Chain Whirler. So I guess I'll take a turn off on playing the Lotus in order to make sure we can kill the Cobra before it does too much damage. And we'll save the treasure token. Evolving Wilds would have made double the mana. So happy we got rid of the Cobra. Alright, this seems like a good turn for Lotus. That way if they do have something like Wrath of God, we also don't overextend into it. And then next turn, Tyrant plus Annex is pretty good. Playing Annex would have also been reasonable, because if they do have a Sweeper, we get a bunch of tokens in return. It's going to be another explorer. So opponent's definitely playing Omnath and Uro as well. I guess since they can't play Uro in standard, they've moved to historic. Alright, well, we get to 
attack. Probably not going to use Castle and just sink all my mana into this Leyline Tyrant, which is going to be awesome. So Lotus now makes 7 mana, play Annex, and this red mana is not going to go anywhere. In fact, I should probably just tap my mountain for mana so I don't forget to float mana. So if my opponent does have a Wrath of God, I get to make 6 mana, deal 6 to their face, and we get a whole bunch of tokens, so my opponent might just be dead even if they wipe the board here. And then we would love to find a way of sacrificing our own Tyrant, Kazul's Fury, Shadow Skull Smashing would do. Well, there we go. So, let's see here. Pretty sure I can kill my opponent this turn. So how much mana do I have? 20. So... I can do 5 damage. 1 at the snake. 1 at the tyrants. And then deal 13 damage to my opponents. And attack for lethal. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand, I guess. Could go poorly if my Tyrant gets dealt with, because then we don't have much else going on. Turn 1 Elves. Yeah, let's just stomp the Elves. Can't wait an extra turn on playing the Leyline Tyrant. Opponent Explorers, so they are definitely trying to ramp into something big. Well, I guess we'll just keep stomping on their mana creatures. Next turn we can play Tyrants. And then next Lotus would be a nice draw. Nice, Stone Cold for 4 is actually pretty decent at blocking Tyrants. But I think I still play it. Take 4. Ooh, Elder Gargroth. That's a bit of a problem. So, what's my plan here? I think I just save a mana to Smashing for 6 next turn. So I'm gonna have to take a hit from Stonecoil and Gargroth down to 6 at least. Opponent probably draws a card or makes a beast. Yeah, I'll have 5 mana now, 5 more mana next turn, so I can Smashing for 8. This trample, so playing Wily Goblin to Chum doesn't do much. Could play Bone Crusher. And then float 2 mana, plus 5 next turn is only 7, so that's not quite enough. Yeah, I think I just uh, pass here. And hope they can kill Tyrant with the fight effect. Opponent draws a card. Take 10. And Nissa shows up. I will protect the virtue of this world. Rise, my elemental friend. Alright, so I can smashing for X equals six, taking out Gergroth and Nissa. Uh, 
And then I can still play Bone Crusher Giants. And we get to hang back to block the forest. It's gonna be six mana. For a Voracious Hydra for four, killing my Tyrants. That's too bad. Don't have any floating mana to finish off the Hydra. And then probably trade here, take four. Lotus is a bit late to the party. Would have been pretty awesome two turns ago. So I can play Giants, play Wily Goblin into another Wily Goblin. So I can double block Voracious Hydra, we don't take any Trample and chum block the lands, so we are technically still alive, but we're dead to a slight breeze. And then we'll still need to draw an answer to the forest. And a Carnage Tyrant. A little bit more than a slight breeze, I would say. Alright, GG's. And there's a Lotus. A little bit late to the party. Well, being able to double our mana with the uh, Tyrant for the smashing for six was pretty sweet. But our opponent just had a little bit too much going on. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a uh, hand with a lot of dragons in it, so I mean I gotta keep. Just need to draw two more lands so we can eventually play Glorybringer. Next turn probably starting with Annex unless we need to kill a one toughness creature. Double Explore. Serpent's got access to quite a bit of mana already. And they're banned. For Cultivate. So despite my opponent being on the draw, they're doubling the amount of mana they have. We do have the Kazul's Fury if we eventually get to make a lot of mana with a Leyline Tyrant. If my opponent has a Wrath of God, I at least get some tokens from Annex. It's gonna be another Cultivate. And it did tap both of the planes, so makes it unlikely for the opponent to be holding a Wrath of God. So a lot of ramp so far. Hopefully no Ugin Spirit Dragon next turn. I know 88 ways to defeat. Keep an open mind. Narset finds Cleansing Nova, so my opponent will be able to sweep the board next turn. So let's see, what can I do about it? Is there some way I can kill my opponent right now? Yeah, I guess I can play Wily Goblin. Annex goes up to 6, attack for 10, and then Kazul's Fury with a treasure token to deal 6 more damage to my opponent.
All right, sweet. A wily goblin giving Anax a boost and managed to kill the opponent just before the cleansing nova could be cast. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play and we've got a fine opening hand, especially on the play. This might be a little slow on the draw. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn one, Allosaurus Shepherd. So our opponent's on an elf deck, most likely. So a Chain Whirler could be pretty brutal here if they don't have a Lord. Second Shepherd. Ouch. Yeah, this is not going to be pretty. All right, well, <laughs> on that note, Goblin Chain Whirler is one hell of a card. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.